Well, welcome to session three of how to kill a bad habit. So we've analyzed the habit we want to destroy. We've seen the pleasure that it offers and the pain it promises to alleviate. We've known our enemy. Now we know how to combat it. One of the first and arguably the best tool that we're given is to eliminate the moment. Eliminate the moment. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What Jesus is pointing out there is where to draw the battle line. He says, he doesn't say watch and pray that you may not sin. He said, if temptation, thoughts solicited to our mind that stirs our affections, if that gets us to enact the will where we move towards this desire that ultimately brings death, the outcome we don't want, he says, watch yourself. The moment where the thoughts are in your mind and your affections are being stirred, that's called temptation. And when we're lured and enticed by temptation, when we unite with that desire, it gives birth to sin and sin brings forth death. So if I don't want to sin, if I don't want to engage in that addiction, if I don't want to keep repeating that habit that is hurting me, Jesus draws the battle line at temptation. Eliminate the moment where the thoughts come into your mind that stir your affections. James Clear talks about this in his book, Atomic Habits. He talks about being aware of our environments because there are cues in our environment that kickstart a craving. We don't know we want something till we see it. I know that's the case for me. I don't walk around thinking about chocolate cake, but if I ever see one, suddenly I want it, and the craving is strong. He makes the note that marketers know this. So Coca-Cola, 45% of their sales come from end caps in grocery stores because they know if you're walking by and I can put my product in your field of vision, you are much more likely to buy it. He tells the story in his book of a, of a cafeteria in a hospital that wanted to be uh, more health conscious. And so they put the sodas out of view and put the waters in view and purchasing of water went up by 25% with no marketing, just putting it in your field of vision. He called it choice architecture. And I wanna challenge you, be the architect of your environment, not the victim of it. One of the first and best ways we can fight against our habits is by eliminating the moments that lead to them. Choice architecture. So many of us shame ourselves for lack of willpower when really what we need is forethought. It's fascinating, Sun Tzu in his book, Art of War, talks about this. There's actually little in the book about actual combat and fighting. It's more about not positioning yourself where the enemy has the advantage. So much of the book is don't linger in dangerously isolated positions. If you're in a place that's not gonna help you succeed in battle, get out of there. Reposition yourself where victory is much more likely. And that's where we're meant to start. Now that we know the habit we wanna kill, now that we know the addiction or the sin we wanna break, how do we do it? We start by eliminating the temptation. Jesus said it this way, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Which he's being hyperbolic there, you could lust with your left eye or lust with no eyes. But what he's saying there is get radical about changing your environment to stop the temptation. Because temptation is easy. It's built that way. Some of you wanna break your addiction to mindlessly scrolling on social media. You're on your phone for hours and it's whittling away your life. Let me tell you something, it's built to keep you in. That's what the endless scroll is for. It's built to make it easy. You have to make it hard by changing your environment. I remember Donna and I took our kids to a cabin uh, for a few days and, and we marveled at one point that our children weren't asking to watch TV. And we're like, they always ask to watch TV. Why are they not asking? And we realized, oh, cause there's no TV here. And so they didn't see a TV. There was no cue. It never kickstarted that craving. So they made up games, drew pictures, played board games, wrote songs together. I mean, we were Little House on the Prairie. It was adorable. It was so awesome. And we realized, you know what? We weren't geniuses. We just changed the environment and it changed our behavior. And for many of you, that's where it starts. Uh, you don't want to keep mindlessly snacking. Get some of those snacks out of your house. I tell my wife that. You got to stop buying snacks that I like or you'll kill me and it will be your fault. So you got to change what's in the kitchen. Uh, for some of you, your addiction is staying up too late because you're on your phones at night or maybe looking at images, pornography, and you want to stop that. Get your phone out of your bedroom. Get the screens out of your bedroom. Don't lay there and try to fight with willpower while you're at your weakest moment. Eliminate the source of temptation from that space. I know for me, when I was young, I uh, wanted to study the Bible more, but I would always end up watching TV. So I just got the TV out of my house. 
And that's where I learned some of my best Bible study habits. Donna and I, when we were first married, wanted to spend more time together. So we would put our TV in a closet. So if we wanted to watch a movie, we had to pull it out, hook up all the cords, and then watch a movie. And it made us decide, is it worth the hassle? Sometimes it was, but often it wasn't. But deciding we're not the victims of our environment, but the master of it, and we will architect our choices, helped us be the kind of people we want to be. So I want to challenge you, now that you've analyzed that habit, that temptation, that addiction, the thing you want to kill, how can you change your environment to make it much less likely for you to do that thing? That when you feel that pain, you go to a different source. Maybe you pray instead of chase that pleasure. One of the ways to change the environment is to invite somebody else in. Ask someone to pray with you about it. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Invite God into the process and maybe one other trusted friend of how can I change the architecture of my choices? And you just might see some immediate and very encouraging results right away. Work on it, and we'll see you next time.